Welcome to the Facebook Live Studios of Raisina Dialogue 2020. This panel is going to discuss on the prospects of trilateral cooperation between India, Australia and Indonesia. This is part of a project that was undertaken by ORF, LOE and CSIS. This is a report which is now online at orfonline.org. Please give it a read. Uh, to discuss with me today, I have Professor Rory Metka from the Australian National University and Ambassador Dino Pati Jalal, former ambassador to the United States. So, uh, uh, to the panelists, I would first like to ask, do you now see that in the current scenario between countries are now more comfortable in engaging in trilateral initiatives or minilateral platforms rather than entering into bilateral engagements or multilateral forums? Because we see that if we see India, we have seen a uh, proliferation of India's entry into, multi, uh, into minilaterals like we have the Quad, we have Russia, India, China, among others. Mm -hmm. Even Indonesia, it does have issue-based trilateral initiatives like the MITCA, and Australia also has the Quad and many others. Do you see now countries being more comfortable with trilateral initiatives? If we start with you, Ambassador Jalal. Well, for, for us, uh, first it has to be driven by, by needs, right? Uh, by the imperative of doing so. For example, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Philippines has serious problem of security in Sulu Sea. Yeah. Right? Based on that, all the three countries have to cooperate because uh, the need is there and all, the, all three of them see the need to, uh, to cooperate uh, trilaterally. And on the practical side, uh, yes, bilateral dealing always good, uh, but trilateral and minilateral uh, are good because the size is small. Yeah. Right? And especially if you have to work with countries that you have a habit of cooperating with. Uh, for example, I can tell you as a former uh, diplomat that Indonesia and Australia have a very strong habit of working together. Our diplomats just get along, yeah. and we know each other's habits. And from there, uh, it's easier to form uh, diplomatic projects. Right? So the answer is, is yes, yeah. but it has to be needs-driven. Yeah. Yeah. Professor? Look, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think that if you look at the, the Indo-Pacific region, the architecture of diplomacy is really ha has three layers now. You, you have, of course, you have solid bilateralism, and you have uh, some multilateral inclusive institutions. Minilateralism is somewhere in between. I think it's about that convergence of, uh, of interests, of capabilities, mm. and of a willingness to work together. Mm. And I think of, and, and of a challenge, of, of, of a set of issues mm. uh, and needs. Mm. And I think that we've seen some great examples in really the last 15 years evolve, but there's a fundamental logic now to this proposal for India, Indonesia, and Australia mm. to move into this space. It doesn't mean that we stop doing bilateralism or we stop doing multilateralism. These things can mm. be mutually yeah. supported. For any trilateral initiative to succeed, the bilateral ties have to be equally strong. Mm. If we look at the uh, scenario of India, Indonesia, we have had a, we had a, a strategic partnership since 2005 onwards, but there was not much momentum. It's, I think, only in the last five years do we see a lot of momentum happening in the relationship. We have now the bilateral naval exercises. We have a shared vision statement in the Indo-Pacific. And even if we look at with Australia, the intensity of the Oz Index in 2019 was the mm. greatest among all the exercises that we had. But do you think that there are still some baggages that the countries have to get over? For instance, like yesterday, you mentioned that if India and Indonesia plan to have an FTA, there are some complexities, trade complexities that we still have to get over. Even in terms of Australia, even when we were doing our interviews, there was still skepticism as to Australia pulling out of the 2007 Quad. And there is also some skepticism also in the minds of Australians when about the inclusion of non being included in Malabar, mm -hmm. do you see such hurdles uh, being a factor when we talk of such trilateral cooperative initiatives? For Indonesia, uh, Indonesia, I must admit that for many years we look at strategic environment to the north and to the east, yeah. which is China, Japan, Korea. Yes. And to the west, we sort of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, not ignore, but, but not paying as much attention as we should. Uh, and our relationship with India, uh, we found out, uh, I, I had the good fortune to, to chair the Indonesia-India eminent person group yes. to review, review the relations. We found out that we had to recalibrate the relationship from the non-aligned mindset of the 60s to the new realities mm -hmm. of the 21st century. And there is now uh, a great appreciation in Jakarta that India today is very different mm. than uh, uh, India two or three decades ago. And uh, we also pay great attention on Indian Ocean mm. uh, 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 geopolitical uh, 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 landscape. And 
uh, is important to our security and prosperity, and India is a big part of it. Right? So, so now the calculus on India has and perspectives has changed a great mm -hmm. deal from Jakarta's uh, side. Yeah. So, and 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 uh, you're right that uh, uh, a problem in our relationship had been too many MOUs, yes. right? And yes. very few get get implemented. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of our recommendations is let's just have fewer MOUs and make sure they are followed up uh, in a systematic way and there's a way to check on them. Mm. Yeah. Professor mm. Metcalf. No, I, I, I would agree with that. I, I would say that um, we shouldn't focus on episodes from the past, if you like. We've got to be very, very forward looking mm. and look at interests and capabilities and, and also, I guess, common values as well in a way. I think the fact yeah. that um, these three countries are, are multi-ethnic uh, democracies with uh, really grappling with this new era, uh, it gives us a, a real conversation we can have mm. in building common capability. I'd also mm. note, uh, Pramesha, that in fact, the example of the bilateral relationship between Australia and Indonesia, yeah. which has made such amazing progress in the past few decades, mm. Mm. where there's a lot of practicality mm. and trust on a day-to-day -day basis, mm. actually has some lessons mm. for the Australia-India, and I suspect the Indonesia-India mm. relationships. Mm. So a triangle, can actually in some ways be, be, be stronger Strong. than a, another arrangement. It's interesting you brought up non-alignment. It actually flows into a third question, which is uh, if we talk about foreign policy strategies of all the three countries mm. or the values which govern the foreign policy mechanisms of the three countries, Indonesia has followed a non-aligned st stature throughout the years. India also was, but I think there has been a shift up primary shift now that we are talking like now we have become more issue based alignments. Mm -hmm. Australia has a very close relationship with the US which mm -hmm. uh, is not going to change even in the mm -hmm. 2017 uh, foreign policy paper it was very clearly mentioned that the relationship with US is going yeah. to be a very important pillar. So uh, do you see these kind of different foreign policy values that the three countries have can act as a hurdle when we cooperate on a trilateral basis? Well, in, in Indonesia, uh, there's definitely a strategic uh, mindset uh, shift, just as you see in India. Mm. In the past, I think any government in India that has strategic partnership with the U.S. would have a lot of problem, right? Yeah. In Indonesia, one government fell in the 50s uh, because it had signed a mm. defense cooperation agreement with the U.S. But now both of us mm. have a strategic mm. partnership with uh, the U.S. You know, that's uh, really night and day in terms mm. of our uh, strategic logic uh, uh, today. Um, and I think for us, uh, what is important is working with like-minded nations, mm. right? Uh, in Indonesia, we can't have any alliance with any country. We can't have any foreign military base. And the way our diplomacy works is uh, one million friends and zero enemies still, right? Uh, we want to work with er anybody, but most importantly, with like-minded friends. And this is why uh, with Australia and India, uh, we're all democracies, mm. right? Uh, we all have uh, important connections within our own uh, geographical uh, locations. Yeah. Uh, we have strategic imperative to work together. Uh, we are invested in the question of architecture of the region, whether it's uh, uh, Indo-Pacific. And by the way, APEC, I think India should be part of it. Yes. And I think APEC should be renamed as uh, Indo-Pacific <laughs> e Economic Cooperation, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so having this, this forward-looking, open-minded, uh, strategic mindset, mm -hmm. I think would be uh, 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 valuable to Indonesia, Australia, India uh, cooperation. Yeah, I would turn that around a little bit and mm. say that... Um, the, I guess the differences, the fact that you know, Australia has an alliance with the United States and yet is also an independent Indo-Pacific power, uh, India and Indonesia have got their own, I guess, history and engagement mm. with uh, particularly the non-aligned world. Mm. These things are complementary. And yeah. so in fact, mm -hmm. we can bring mm. different perspectives into a trusted conversation yeah. and be stronger together as a consequence of that. It doesn't mean we have to approach every issue with, with a completely aligned set of views. Yes. Uh, and it's that shared geography of that core Indo-Pacific, mm. yeah. which I think the report really beautifully captures and yeah. the, the anchoring idea. Yeah. That's where the common interests lie. Good. You ended with Indo-Pacific. So, uh, of course. Yes. <laughs> so Indo-Pacific is gaining a lot of impetus in the current debates. Uh, in terms of values and principles, all the three countries essentially agree that it should be free, open, inclusive, and ASEAN centrality mm. is the predominant pillar of the Indo-Pacific. But 
the approach that is taken towards the Indo-Pacific by the three countries, especially Indonesia's approach, is a little different in, to, uh, in comparison to India and Australia. India and Australia essentially see this as a strategic, as a security theater also in some regards. But Indonesia, I think, essentially sees this as an economic theater. Do you see uh, the three countries cooperating in the strategic and security realms also in under such uh, cooperative frameworks besides the economic one? Yeah, well, first, if uh, India, Indonesia, Australia, uh, cooperation is going to happen at, at the next level, uh, it's going to it's going to address a, a few important issues, but one of the most important is architecture. Yes. Right. So, so, uh, so we must have an answer to that. And and the beauty is this: the beauty is there's in the history of the region there are so many times when an idea is proposed by a superpower or a major power and gets knocked down mm -hmm. just because the other ones don't like it, mm -hmm. right? But if it's an idea proposed by a middle power. Right, uh, either Indonesia, Australia, or or India, it gets higher likelihood of being uh, accepted. Right, just mm -hmm. like the East Asia summit, summit for example. Yes. Right, uh, if the U.S. had opposed it, the others would would reject it, and and vice versa. Right? So, so for Indonesia, the most important thing is uh, we don't act alone on this. We bring ASEAN on the table as well. Uh, it yeah. took some time to do to do it, uh, and we did it. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's going to uh, going to be some uh, give and take. Uh, but we believe in incremental value, uh, incremental process, uh, and this is still uh, a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is uh, important is we see Indo-Pacific as a building block, yeah. right? Uh, takes time, and then you know it can be ASEAN plus BIMSTEC plus this and that, uh, and in the end you know, we get a, uh, a more coherent and, and inclusive uh, Indo-Pacific. Professor. Yeah, look, I think I think the um, one of the virtues of the region actually is this literally its its fluidity. Mm. You know, it's mm. a maritime region. Yeah. It's both economic and strategic. strategic. And, and in fact, even the original Australian view of the region back in our defence white paper in 2013 was based on the connectivity of the sea mm. lanes. Yeah. So it was never purely military. I think we need to proceed carefully in gradual steps, and that's what the report illustrates mm. nicely. Uh, that I think there, there can and should be some sort of security cooperation built into this, not an alliance, but mm. coast guards working mm. together, yeah. sharing maritime operating pictures, yes. looking at transnational security issues, and yes, then maybe moving to the strategic stuff further on, mm. but also not treating this as a set of relationships that is exclusive. Uh, we will still play with others and be more, I guess, effective together. So yes. let's end this discussion on the question that generally arises when we talk about cooperative mechanisms. Mm. How do we deal with the China factor? How do we tell the, uh, create the message that this is again not any China hedging or China balance strategy that we are trying to deal, look at it. This is purely an alignment or a cooperative mechanism just for the three countries to come closer and work in the Indo-Pacific. Well, uh, I think the key is ASEAN has to take the lead. That's what ASEAN centrality means. And I think China would respond a lot better to ASEAN uh, taking the lead and embracing China and convincing China. Uh, so I th that's one way of doing it. And, and the other is, uh, look, uh, everybody knows there's a trust deficit, uh, but Indonesian and Australia experience mm. proved that uh, that trust deficit can be uh, bridged and overturned uh, in uh, just several years if we have the, the right intention. You know, during the East Timor crisis, uh, trust was so low. We had yeah. we didn't want to do anything with Australia for about a year or two, yes. right? And then uh, somebody made the approach, and right now Australia is uh, uh, the the closest, uh, one of the closest uh, countries to Indonesia with whom we have a strategic partnership. Proves that mm. trust deficit can be turned into strategic yeah. partnership. I think that's a good lesson for China to keep in mind, and for the other major powers as we build this Indo-Pacific construct. Yeah. Mm. Look, I. I would say, and, and it's, it's reassuring to hear that, that narrative of the Australia-Indonesia relationship, which I, well, I fully agree, agree with, but I would say that, of course, there is a China factor behind minilateralism. It's to say that, naturally, uh, middle powers and democracies want to, I guess, share their views on what's happening in the region when there's so much mm. uncertainty, but that is not, it's not containment. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is mm. the, the big misnomer that is applied to this sort of thing. 
And it's also, frankly, uncertainty about other great powers, including the United States. Mm. Uh, naturally, we're going to want to really look a little bit more to our own resources uh, into the future. Yeah. So let's, let, let's, let's build. Yeah. It's going to be a long journey, but I think this report is a really good start. Thank you so much.